Hello everyone, in this series I would like to try answer the questions why, when, where and how do code review. The main idea is to make it as much closer as possible to real work, to real project activities which I believe you make on your daily basis. This video is a collaboration of Anywhere Club and a Pump and Jax initiative. I'm Vitaly Vishniewski, and Jax ambassador and software engineer with 24 years experience in various technologies and programming languages. And Jax means engineering excellence is an initiative in IPAM which aims is to collect the best practices of engineering software development and apply it to build the great engineering culture of excellence in our company. So, let me ask my guest Andre to introduce himself and his task, which I give him in advance. Hello, my name is Andre Patkozin. I am a .NET developer and author of the channel Dev Jungles. Today I am invited to Anywhere Club to take part in this code review show. On my channel, uh, I have filmed lots of code reviews, but today I will be a victim of code review instead of reviewer. And the project that I was honored to join is Federated Search Engine. It is POC or MVP of it, but it is still really interesting. Some of technologies and standards that I used in the project are completely new for me. For example, I have never heard about JMS Pass or RSQL before this project, and it was really interesting for me to try them. Code review must be performed on every time when we try to integrate our increment to our solution. I'm fairly saying it's uh, every match request, every pull request must be reviewed by your colleague. Do not uh, make code review as a routine or do not demotivate your colleagues. Uh, your match request or pull request uh, should be uh, small enough to be possible to review it within half an hour or one hour maximum. Because it's hard to do on a daily basis um, code review of huge increments. There are some important points which code reviewer must check during the session. Let's take a look on it. Code cleanliness and readability, reuse and dependencies, testing and error handling, performance and security, and the last conformance to requirements and tasks. I would like to pay your attention that the last point is the most time consuming. It's required to uh, for code reviewer to be deep dive into solution, into business task. In some cases, it's optional point. Let's start with theory and uh, switch to our real task. Okay, let's do code review. I open my uh, repository in GitHub. I see the uh, branch which Andre prepared during his task. Uh, I've created a pull request to review his changes. I can say that it can be done in some ideas. Today we do it in the simplest way on GitHub platform. I'm going to uh, go through the checklist of code review and start with the first point to check clearness and readiness of the changes which Andre made. I would like to admit that his pull request is not huge and it, it is a good point for general code review practice since the uh, code review must be performed on a daily basis and it should not demotivate uh, your colleagues to do it. I also see that Andre had uh, the documentation for the readme file with uh, a description, uh, the specification uh, which was introduced by him. Great. Okay, I see the some changes in the sample file. Okay. 
Okay. So about the naming primary key selector. Okay. Okay. Binder. Binder, binder, binder. <laughs> to be honest, it's not clear why uh, this class called binder and so I just write a question why the class and moreover I see that he uh, provided it as dependency so I don't see any reason to to make this class uh, be injected as dependency. It looks very straightforward. Mm, I will start a review and then submit it in the well. Um, so I have to admit that code review is not a uh, straight process i will be fit, uh, switched to different points of checklist it doesn't matter i look and review code uh, in general my task is to make it easier to understand uh, well structured andre introduced a new namespace query within uh, infrastructure he decided to uh, make a uh, number of classes which work with queries. So it's like query build binder, but it still have a questions. Parent resolver. Okay. Okay, let's move on. Mm. Primary key selector. It's a local function. And then go pass to data select set um, but why do not the main question is that Andre created an entity which use it in a, another place it produce a mess and dependency on external code for the data set so i don't see any uh, any reason to uh, declare the primary key selector outside of dataset so i suggest dataset class mm -hmm. ah i see he wanted to reuse the same um the same gems pass mapper no, do not build it again it's so word optimization i don't think it bring us a better performance uh, it's very simple uh, class uh, which uh, not required uh, huge uh, resources to build up okay so in this case I still recommend to move it uh, building the uh, fun functor in data set and one one more um, point regarding the binder and resolver 
uh, in this place we don't know we don't uh, have an idea how uh, the query bounded and how it will be processed uh, I mean in this case we need to find out uh, where the binder uh, is initialized initiated how it combine it so it is a dependency we need to go to extension uh, service collection extension see that it is a uh, transit instance and we need to go to the constructor of this class to figure out that this also has dependency on resolvers uh, back to the so we need many switches to understand what uh, what uh, happened here and what we are going to do it can be reasonable in case if we uh, introduce in in future we will, we will introduce uh, as much uh, resolvers uh, uh, so when we have uh, many implementations of resolvers uh, but on current state uh, on current st stage of this project it's unnecessary uh, uh, dependency uh, and it leads to less understanding of this code okay uh, let's move on you know, it's great that Andre added uh, unit tests at unit tests uh, to the solution. I will need to check it if it's run properly. Let's try to switch to another view because it's. not very suitable to read mm -hmm. yeah I see that uh, he introduced uh, values for root query and distant query mock up the requests re reply on these requests This looks fine. At least it uh, resolved the in uh, the ta uh, the issue which um, implemented. Let's continue our review with the cleaning and understanding. It's very strange uh, that single changes in the uh, James Pass mapper class is uh, introducing this using. Looks like Andre make, made some experiments and just leave a mess. Mm, we don't need to leave uh, any uh, unused. Uh, things similar to this uh, dependency which as I see just introduced we don't need it you and I can make a suggestion Even empty lines 
are not required because it make a mess in code changes uh, in future. I also don't see any reason to use this using as well. Please remove it. So uh, here's why I'm talking about we, uh, that we uh, use this uh, functor, primary key selector here, uh, and even uh, don't have an idea how it works. So from this perspective, it's better to introduce uh, building this functor here even maybe even uh, introduce a static uh, function since you just need to use jamie's pass mapper Yeah, James Pass Mapper is a static class which, uh, yeah, which even uh, don't need to be constructed every time when it's used. So from this perspective, uh, uh, it really doesn't make sense to build uh, to introduce. Uh, the primary case selector here in search engine rather than just uh, declare the function in uh, data set because the only reason to uh, to create this uh, is to get primary key from the entity in data set And there are definitely no any uh, performance issue optimization. So according to our uh, code review checklist, uh, I've uh, checked in code uh, code cleanliness and readability. Also, uh, admit some uh, dependency issues, and we take a look on. Uh, reuse uh, ability for new code there was not uh, uh, any reason to uh, check performance or security because uh, this uh, task was very uh, trivial and did not touch uh, was not in touch with uh, aspects uh, there also no uh, updates uh, on the error handling but let me check for the resolver it's okay mm -hmm. So there was not introduced any code, uh, which uh, maybe uh, can be a source of uh, errors or exceptions. So we don't need to check error handling. Um, testing was performed uh, under a write a unit test for new functionality. It's good. 
I will not uh, perform the uh, requirements conformance uh, since it uh, may take uh, more time. So in this case, uh, I will. Uh, I just checked uh, the uh, unit test. Uh, find out it uh, reasonable. So we uh, we see that uh, the root request return us uh, two entities uh, with different global IDs, global user IDs, and we have a child request which uh, reference to the uh, single uh, root entity with the IT uh, seventeen. And uh, we see that and we see that uh, the expected result meets our expectations. So we definitely find the single entity of spoken languages. Yeah, it's work. must work yeah, and we see that uh, the backward binding uh, between the par uh, root entity and uh, uh, and the child entity is uh, appear properly I need to say that code review is interacting uh, process. Uh, I have seven comments pending to complete this session. I have questions to the class binder, to the functor primary case selector. Uh, some concerns about uh, unnecessary stuff, uh, which make a mess. So I expect, as a code reviewer, I expect that uh, I will have a conversation with Andre to discuss uh, some open questions and to hear his, his reasons uh, about some not clear for me places. So I would like to say that code review is an iterative uh, process and I'm waiting for a discussion with Andre uh, uh, to answer the open questions uh, to some um, misunderstanding from my side. Let me submit uh, my review. And I submit my review. So, as you see, uh, it is not total code review of the Boyle solution and uh, the practice of uh, daily reviews uh, or per poll request reviews. Uh, it is best practice uh, which allow us to keep our solution clear and uh, understand uh, on with the high quality to introduce other changes in future. Today I'm done with the code review of Andre's changes. I would like to announce our next video where I would like to raise the question uh, who can perform the code review. And I'm looking for a new guest. It's preferably a junior software engineer uh, who will review my code and we will discuss if it's possible for junior uh, developers to review the uh, code uh, of uh, senior developers. Please use contact in, in the description to this video to request your participation in uh, uh, the next video. In addition, in the description, you also will be able to find that link to the video uh, with Andre, uh, where he uh, explained uh, the importance of the federated search technology uh, which we used in the uh, current solution. So I hope you uh, have fun today and see you next time.